Hi and welcome back to another video. This is the third time I'm trying to film this video so I'm really really hoping that this time around it will go as planned. I want to start the video by saying a massive thank you to everybody that has watched my previous videos and have left a comment or shared the videos on any social media platform out there. I'm really really grateful and I really really thank to every single one of you that has supported me in that way. And also, I want to mention that my DMs are always open. I will link my Instagram here. I had a couple of people contact me that needed some help re in regards to their cameras and had a couple more questions regarding some of the videos that I did. And I do answer to every single message that I received. So please, if you have a question, if you need help and you think I might be able to help you out, just send me a message and I will gladly help you out. In today's video I want to talk to you guys, especially to those that are just thinking of buying a camera and are a little bit overwhelmed by all the options and all the cameras available out there. And I want to offer you five tips um, that you should consider before deciding which camera you should buy. And if you guys that are watching the video know any other tips or have any other ideas that will help those that are just starting their journey into photography, please leave a comment down below and who knows, you might be able to help someone else as well. Now let's get into this video. The first thing that I will say you need to consider when you're thinking of buying a camera is why do you need a camera? Why have you taken this decision of buying a new camera? Are you using your phone at the moment or is your camera feeling a little bit outdated? Try and find an answer to this question. Why do you feel like you need a new camera? Unless you have a specific reason, unless you know exactly why do you need a new camera, you can still use whatever you have at the moment. Either a compact or a phone, like phone quality nowadays is incredible, it's amazing. If, if you look at the images online, even on Instagram and stuff like that, it's very very difficult to tell which one was taken with a phone and which one was taken with a camera so unless you have a very very good reason as to why you want to buy or invest a new camera or in a new system you you need a clear answer to that um, and don't do it just because you know there's a shiny new camera on the market or people are saying oh you shouldn't be using a compact you should be using a DSLR Try and answer that question for yourself. Why do you need a new camera? After you have the answer to this question, you can move into step number two or tip number two, whatever you want to call it. Um, and question number two that you should ask yourself before purchasing a camera is what features do you want that camera to have? Think about how are you going to use the camera? Think about how you're using the camera that you have at the moment or even your phone and think what features would you like your camera to have. Would you like the camera to have the option to change the lenses? Would you like uh, the camera to have a flip out screen, um, touch screen, Wi-Fi and all, all that, you know, amazing stuff that cameras come with nowadays. Think about the, the main features that you will know the camera should have and that you know you will use. I know as beginners it can be so difficult to understand which camera is the best because everybody is just giving their own opinions and stuff like that online. Um, but if you know exactly what features would you like your camera to have, when you go online and you post those questions in all those Facebook groups, because I've seen them, I've seen you asking, I'm a beginner, I want to buy a camera, help me out try and mention what features would you like your camera to have. This way, the people that will answer to your comments or give some advice to you will have an idea of what you are after. Um, so when you ask online or when you ask advice from someone, try and answer this question for you, first of all. Um, and do give this information to the other people that you're asking. Tell them, I'm looking for a new camera because I want to print my images really big or because I don't have a touch screen and I would really like to have a touch screen or I would like to have more zoom or I want to play with more lenses. Try and think of the main features that the camera that you would like to have should have. Tip number three or step number three in this buying of camera process should be budget and I was talking to a friend the other day and you know who you are and we were 
not necessarily arguing, but he had a different opinion regarding budget. He was suggesting that budget should be number one on the list when you decide to buy a camera. While in my personal opinion, I think budget should be on the third place. And the reason being, if you start with a budget in mind and you don't know much about cameras and photography and what can you get for your money, you might go with the wrong choice. Um, most common online, again, Facebook, Quora, even on Instagram, when people ask about, you know, receiving some advice re in regards to what camera they should purchase, they will start with a budget. So the, the whole <laughs> story goes like this. They say, I have a budget of, let's say, 400 pounds or British pounds. I would like to buy a camera to upgrade my phone from my phone. And as soon as people see that sort of budget, they will start jumping at you with all these options that will fit in that budget that will probably not fit your needs. So if you take my advice and you think about why do you need a camera and what would you like that camera to do and then add the budget in, then the people that are offering you advice would be able to give you a better advice, would be able to give you a better suggestion of cameras. Now, in regards to the budget, something that a lot of people don't know or don't realize is that they think that that budget that they set up is going to cover, you know, the camera itself and they don't need to worry about anything else. Now, the truth is most cameras nowadays, they don't come with a memory card, for example, unless there is a bundle or an offer or a deal that whatever company is doing. So if you don't have a memory card, you can't really use the camera. <laughs> so you need to think that within that budget that you have reserved for this purchase, you need to include all the accessories. So you need to take into consideration that your budget should include all the extra accessories. And when you tell people I have this budget, they would usually give you the, the camera that sits at the top of that budget and they don't take into consideration any of the accessories. So you can end up spending those 400 pounds on a camera, but not have a memory card or a spare battery or even lenses. Sometimes they will recommend the camera um, that is an interchangeable lens camera and the, the budget itself will cover only the body. And then you have to take into consideration the price of the lenses and so on. Um, so on number three, like the, the third step that you should take before making a purchase is thinking about the budget and also think about how much can you stretch from that budget as well. Step number four, in your purchasing of a new camera experience um, should be the way that that camera looks. And this is something that a lot of people don't pay too much attention to. And I think it is, it is very, very important. It's a very important part of, um, of the camera itself, of the features that the camera have. Nowadays, you have cameras coming in all shapes and sizes and uh, they all look similar and different at the same time. I know at the moment it's very difficult, well, if not impossible in the UK to actually go into a shop and see a camera and actually hold a camera in your hands, but it's very, very important. Um, if you can wait until the shops are back open and you can go and actually feel the camera and try the camera, I would highly suggest you should do that. Uh, you should wait, you should go and you should hold the camera in your hands before you actually buy it because it can feel very different in your hands. And also just by seeing a picture online, it's not going to give you the same idea of how big the camera is, of how the buttons or where the buttons are placed and how the camera actually feels in your hands. I know in time you can get used to a camera and you can get used to the way that the camera feels, especially if you haven't used the camera beforehand. But the way that that camera feels for the first time in your hand is very, very important because if you're going to use this camera, hopefully every single day, you need to have something that is very comfortable in your hands, that you're happy to use and you're happy to carry around with you at all times. So. If you can, try and wait until you can actually go and see the camera and try it out and hold it in your hands and play around with it a little bit. Um, if, if not, and you really, 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 really need a camera now and you can't wait, um, 
try and see if, if the company that you're buying from they if they have like a rental service or something like that so you can try the camera a little bit beforehand before making your decision um, it will make a huge huge difference as I said in time you can get used to a camera if it, it's a little bit off from what you would expect um, but finding that perfect one from from the beginning is a lot more satisfying and you will have you will enjoy using it a lot a lot more so number four uh, I say try and see the camera in person try and hold it try and handle it a little bit and see how it feels and step number five which is sort of a step and not really at the same time is most likely well in, in let's say 60% of the cases if you decided that you want to buy a camera you might have some friends or someone in your family that is using a camera so you would think that oh I should go and ask them um, what would happen in most cases I'm not saying everybody will do the same thing because we're not all the same and everybody has different ideas and opinions and whatnot um, but most likely they would recommend you the camera that they are using as photographers we get attached to our cameras and we love them and you know show me a photographer that doesn't love their cameras we absolutely love them we we use them every single day and they they help us produce some amazing images and of course we love them so we want to share you know our joy with everybody and we want everybody else to use the same camera because it's so great for us but in most of the situation the person that we're recommending that camera to is not going to use it the same as us it's not going to take the same sort of pictures as we do um, and that's why it might not be the perfect one for them so if you're asking a friend or if you're asking people that are using a camera at the moment and they straight on recommend the the camera that they are using themselves try and think a little bit more about that that option um, I personally I get asked about the camera that I use and I get asked if, if people should buy it and I probably recommend my camera in I don't know 20% of the cases my camera is good for what I do if you are doing the exact same thing that I do and you have the exact same level of knowledge as I, I have yes I'll probably recommend it but if not I would most likely suggest something else so and this this goes for other people other photographers out there if you have friends coming to you and asking if they should buy the same camera that you're using try and guide them try and help them out figure out what they want to do with the camera and then make a suggestion don't just straight on jump at them and be like yeah sure buy this exact one because it's going to be perfect for you <laughs> Uh, because it might not be so that was all for today's video I really hope I can get it up and running today I will hopefully post it up today um, and keep in mind if you're looking for a camera if you want to buy a camera because you just got into photography try and follow this five steps first of all think about how are you going to use the camera why why do you want to buy a camera what is the the need why do you feel like you, you need a new camera think about the features that you would like the camera to have and try and stick to them so that you will, your purchase will actually match those those needs that you have set a budget and consider all the extra accessories that you might need for the camera itself if you can go and try the camera try and hold the camera in your hands at least and make sure that it feels comfortable and feels good and step five don't necessarily go with the camera that your friend your photographer friend is suggesting because it might not be the right one for you so try and find a lot of information a lot of opinion from a lot of people and narrow it down to the perfect one for you um, my perfect my ideal camera is not your ideal camera in most cases unless we do exactly the same thing um, so take all these five steps in consideration when buying a camera and I hope that if you do you will go with the right choice
if you still have questions and if you're still a little bit confused and you can't really figure out which one you should go with, um, feel free to leave a comment down below. I bet a lot of people are happy to give advice. And uh, if you want to talk more about buying a camera, I'm more than happy to help. So just send me a message and I will definitely help you out. Until next time.